The DJI RavenEye image transmission system gives you some really cool ways to level up your filmmaking by transmitting the video signal from your camera to the Ronin app. I'm Jason Roberts and in this video I'm going to show you how to attach the RavenEye unit to the camera or gimbal, which cables to plug in into the right ports to make sure everything works as it should, and also how to use the Ronin app to level up your filmmaking with some cool features such as Active Track 3. Okay, so this is the unit itself, and it's compatible with the Ronin S, Ronin SC, RS2, and RSC2. You can buy it separately, or you can get it as part of the Pro Combo Pack. I'll link in the description below some of the different ways you can get access to the RavenEye unit itself. DJI claims that the RavenEye image transmission system will transmit up to 200 meters away, so you could potentially have your phone up to 200 meters away from the gimbal and still be controlling it. I haven't tried it that far yet myself, and I'm guessing it depends on if there's there's trees or other buildings in the way. They also claim that there's a 60 millisecond latency from the video signal arriving at the mobile app. The transmitter itself transmits a 1080p signal from the camera to the app, but you can still record high resolutions in the camera itself. In this video, I'm going to assume that you've done the basic gimbal setup and balancing. If you want to learn how to do that easily and quickly, check out the video that I've made in the description below. The first thing you're gonna to want to do is actually charge the RavenEye unit itself. It has its own built-in battery, and to do that, you want want to attach a USB charging cable. Make sure you don't attach the USB charging cable to the port that says RSS as that won't actually charge it. You need to use this side which has this little lightning bolt on it. So once you've plugged in the USB-C charging cable you should see the lights light up telling you that it's charging. The next thing you're going to want to do is mount the unit itself to either the camera or the gimbal. So you can see on the bottom here it's got this cold shoe mount. You can mount it on top of the camera like this but on the RS2 gimbal underneath here there's actually a cold shoe mount and that's a better place for it really. If you mount it on top you might end up with a top heavy setup which might make it a bit more difficult to balance the gimbal. If you're going to be using the cold shoe mount on the RS2 gimbal itself the first thing you want to do is make sure that you open out the antennas here and you're going to want these pointing away from the motor. What you want to do is slot it in underneath and then push it in and make sure you hear a little click and that will tell you that it's in securely. So notice here I've got the antennas pointing away from the motor and that's just going to help prevent these getting damaged when, when the gimbal's moving around. If you're going to be using the smartphone attached to the smartphone arm on the gimbal, you might get away with folding these down and still getting a decent signal. But if you're using the phone far away, you'll probably want these antennas pointing out so you get a good signal. The next thing you need to do is provide a way for the camera to transmit the video image into the RavenEye unit itself. To do this, you're going to use a HDMI cable. So what you need to do is get the correct sized HDMI cable for your camera. On the A7S III that I'm filming on now, it's got a full size HDMI, but on this A7R4, it's got the mini HDMI. So you just need to find the correct cable and plug it into the HDMI output on the camera itself and then into the RavenEye unit. There's only one HDMI input port on the RavenEye unit, so you shouldn't get that mixed up. So now the camera can transmit the video signal into the RavenEye unit, and then the RavenEye unit will transmit it wirelessly to the Ronin app on your phone. Next thing you need to do is attach the RavenEye unit to the gimbal itself. To do this, you need to use a USB-C cable. I'm using this one, which has this right angle attachment, as that just makes it a bit easier. You need to attach this USB-C cable to the correct port on the RavenEye image transmitter, otherwise things won't work properly. You don't want to use this USB-C port next to the HDMI cable, you want to use the USB-C port on the other side where there's only one port. Just gonna plug that in here, and then you plug the other end of this cable into the gimbal. You also need to make sure you plug it into the correct port on the gimbal. The correct port is this bottom port, the final cable you need to attach is the camera control cable. So you want to attach this to the camera. In this case on the A7R4, it's the USB-C port here. And then attach this to the correct port on the gimbal. You want to make sure that once again you use the correct port otherwise things will go horribly wrong. And you want to make sure you attach the camera control cable to the top port on the RS2 here. Just go and do that. And now because we've added some extra stuff, we also need to go and rebalance the gimbal or just adjust the balance to make sure everything's balanced properly. 
If you're wondering what cameras are compatible with the Raven R unit, I'll put a link in the description below to DJI's official compatibility page. So now we've got everything connected, the first thing you want to do is make sure you've got all of the arms unlocked. Never turn on the gimbal when the arms are locked, otherwise you might damage it. And then hold down the power button to power on the gimbal. Next thing you need to do is actually power on the Raven Eye image transmitter. To do that, you just hold in the power button here until it goes red. The next thing you want to do is power on the camera. And then once the camera starts up, if you've got it set up correctly, you should see the blue light on the Raven Eye image transmitter come on. That basically means that everything's ready to connect to it from the app. The next thing you're going to want to do is download and install the DJI Ronin app. You might also need to go and create a DJI account and log into the app. Once you've done that, don't click the connect button at the top here. Instead, tap the connect to Raven Eye link at the bottom here. To use the app, what you're going to need to do is connect your phone's Wi-Fi to the Wi-Fi access point in the Raven Eye image transmitter. On the back of the Raven Eye unit itself, it'll tell you the Wi-Fi access point name. This one starts with Raven Eye and a few different numbers, and you can see the access point showing up here. Just going to tap that to connect to the Wi-Fi on the Raven Eye. And if you get asked for a password, the password is also on the back of the Raven Eye unit. So once you've connected to the Wi-Fi on the Raven Eye and entered the Raven Eye password, head back to the Ronin app. Notice the light on the Raven Eye image transmitter goes to green. That basically means it's connected to the app on the phone. But notice we've got this message telling us to check the connected device. And that's because you need to make sure you set the correct settings up on the camera to allow the image transmission system and the gimbal to work. Depending on the camera you're using, these settings will be different. So once again, to find out the correct settings for your camera, head over to the DJI compatibility page. I'm just gonna go and fix up these settings. So I've fixed up the camera settings on the A7R4 and you can see now that it's transmitting. And if I just use the joystick on the gimbal, you can see that it's moving around, which is pretty cool. So once you're at this point, you know that everything's working correctly and you've got the image being transmitted. And then you can also use some of the features in the Ronin app. If you tap these four arrows here, it will recenter the gimbal. If you tap this icon second up from the bottom on the left here, you get access to these options. You can enable force mobile, I'll just enable that. Now, when I move the phone around, you can see that it's moving the gimbal. I'm just gonna turn off Force Mobile. I've also got this virtual joystick. You can set the speeds for this virtual joystick. And then at the bottom left here, you can use this to move the gimbal. Hello. Once again, tap that to recenter it. You can just turn off joystick. You've also got focus control and active track. If you tap the icon at the bottom left here, you've got loads of options. You can turn on zebras, you can turn on false color, you can turn on focus peaking. If you want to, you can choose a LUT. I'm not gonna do that for now. And you can also change red, green, and blue channels there. If you drag on the screen here, this will enable active track. And now if I go and move the gimbal around, it should keep the A7S III in the frame, which it does. It's gonna cancel that. Let's get a more interesting subject. We'll use Mr. Penguin here. What I'm going to do is just make sure we're zoomed out there so we can see Mr. Penguin. I think I'm in black and white mode there. There we go. So here's Mr. Penguin. I'll drag a box around him like this. And then if I move him around, you can see that the gimbal is tracking Mr. Penguin. This active track feature was actually really useful for one of the scenes I shot in my first ever short film, which I just released recently, and it helped me track it through the screen. I'll put up the actual shot on the screen now, just so you can see how it can kind of help with solo filmmaking. Depending on the camera and camera control cable you're using, you can also change some of the settings. So I can change the aperture here, and that's changing the aperture on the camera. And we can also change the ISO if we wanted to, and also the shutter speed. At the top right, this icon is for the settings. You can turn on different guide frames here, such as rule of thirds. You can choose different aspect markers. So let's say we wanted to shoot in two, three, five to one. You can see now we've got these guides at the top and bottom. You've got things like safety zone markers, focus peaking threshold settings, whether or not you want a center marker and a few other advanced settings, which I'm not gonna go into in a minute. So make sure you click the like button if you've got value out of this video. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any comments, feel free to leave them down below and I'll see you in the next video.